Hello, this is a Samic Baby Grand Piano SG140, so 140 centimetres long, and that's about 4 foot 7, I believe. So it's an extremely small grand piano and uh, has a very warm tone considering the length of the piano. So if you want an extremely small grand piano, then uh, I can really recommend it. A client passed exchanged it for a piano extremely similar to this Bluthner grand piano that we have in stock. This is 190 centimetres long. So we'll compare the tone of both and try and think about why they part exchanged it and uh, what advantages it is to have a longer grand piano. For a short grand piano, it has a surprising amount of legroom. Uh, there's about 63.5 centimetres. That's two centimetres more than, say, a Yamaha U1. And the pedals are only 6.5 from the centimeters from the floor so you could put caster cups under if you're a uh, tall person and make it even greater legroom now the piano generally is in extremely good condition I'm very impressed with it we've obviously refined it as much as we can as well but really it was already in good condition and the internally practically perfect you can see here we've obviously done any cleaning that was necessary the team's already done the work so i'm not quite sure what needed to be done um, but i've marked the worksheet with uh, th work that's already been done and a couple of things that still could may improve it slightly it's extremely well designed piano um, i'm impressed with these uh, you've seen these on other pianos if you're a technician but it's wonderful when people put these wing nuts and they fold in like that so you don't uh, don't disturb anyone and they fold this out and, and they don't come out they stay there so they don't come onto the floor that might sound uh, unimportant but if you're a technician it really does help every little bit helps to have less work to do so you don't have to put this somewhere it just stays there Actually, another firm that does that very frequently is Blutner, so this one also stays in. So you screw it up, obviously, there, and then when it doesn't, you don't have to find it if you're a technician. Uh, you don't have to waste time looking for it. Here's a Yamaha C1. This just has an ordinary screw. It's a good piano, but uh, I wish that all manufacturers would put um, wing nuts and also ones that don't fall out. So this obvious screw, if I'm going to take it right out, and um, then I'm, I've got to the danger of losing it and that might sound silly but you'll be surprised how many bolts and nuts are, are lost because technicians haven't put them in now an interesting feature on this piano is what the middle pedal does because that's normally a sostenuto um, on grand pianos but on this one and I've noticed in, in the USA there's been some my son Evan who's a piano dealer in Houston um, and in fact we have an American Yamaha uh, that does the same so if I re this is the ordinary sustain pedal that's lifting everything up so if you play the keys obviously sustains and then when you put it down the, the sound cuts off but this middle pedal uh, it lifts up just the bass dampers if you have a look at that so if you play this obviously if it's lifting up the bass dampers that means they're going to echo the strings with the middle so if you play that chord again that's just played normally without without pedal with the middle pedal so lifting the dampers up it's very echoey now that could be a lot of fun to use I don't know if anything's been written for that uh, but it's it's a great idea so when we press the right hand sustain pedal the whole of the all the dampers go up if you look here you'll see uh, there's a that's how they've designed it cleverly so that if you press the middle pedal uh, you've just got the bass end going up and you press the right hand pedal sustain then everything goes up uh, that's a very clever system so on this Yamaha C1, the middle pedal, it does a sostenuto, is what you'd expect. So if I press um, the Ds down here and then press the middle pedal, it holds those two up while you can play the rest. And you still hear these notes. So that's obviously more, dis more distinct in terms of what it does. And sostenuto pedal is used in some music. It's got SG140 written on the front of the action there and also on the hammer rail. It's also got written on it here a tuning date by Easy Pins. I think that must mean it's easy to tune, which we found too. You dry. don't know who that is, but it's really 
helpful, uh, just interesting and sometimes helpful if someone does write on the keys. I really appreciate that. So if you're a tuner, uh, that's just something I'd like to encourage. I don't always remember to do it, but I've decided to write on the bottom here. Uh, we pitch raised it to A441.8. It was, I think it was slightly flat. Um, my colleague did that actually, and we usually put it at 14. 141142 and then allow it, it la that allows it to drop because th that's fine for musicians and uh, that saves you having to change the turn the tuning pins all the time which over a long period does loosen the tuning pins now this piano was made in korea my colleague our chief technician does say that Renner had something to do with the design of it and uh, as he's in touch with Renner a lot so i don't doubt what he's saying uh, so it's certainly extremely well designed action. It says here on the hammer special ST. No idea what that means, but if you're in the trade and know Korean pianos, we'd love to hear uh, hear about that if you could. Now it's been used, uh, as you can see, a little, but there's still almost 100% hammer wear. Uh, because it's been used and played in, we can now find voice it. It's actually easier to voice a piano then. You can see voicing marks on it already. So we've done some voicing. Uh, we'll never stop voicing. Obviously, we're trying to get it as even as possible until the piano actually leaves us. And we check the hammers, see if there's any tightness here. Very often, if the piano's not been used a lot, then these get tight, and then that affects the key weight. The other thing we need to do is to lubricate these rollers with talc. Uh, so they're lubricated with talc. Uh, that's pr re what Renner's preferred material is. Some people say Teflon's better, but Renner say Teflon tends to affect the, the glue. They don't like it as much, so <laughs> obviously trying to be very fussy. They prefer talc, which is what we use. As it was practically the only job left to do, I decided to do it while I was making the video. Um, it was just fine voicing to do really now. Uh, to checking obviously the touch and so on, but uh, we never stop refining the piano. But you can rub this in with your finger, it gets some talc on it. Uh, fine grades sandpaper is a common way of doing it as well. So just rubbing it in there, surprising how much difference that makes. It makes it feel smoother, uh, stops any slight noise there might be. Uh, very often there's a slight squeak, but there wasn't on this piano. But that will overcome that, and obviously the tap will wear off and needs doing from time to time. So there was a little refinement work to do on this piano, and still little bits of voicing that I should be doing. Uh, the touch is uh, pretty much as we would like it to be. Lubricating the rollers, it does make it feel slightly smoother as well. Um, so it's important if you're going to measure down weight, then it's a good idea to lubricate the rollers, certainly lubricate the, um, the balance rail, which is what we'll always do anyway. And that then you can r weight it. It's best to do all that first. Um, if you, and also the hammers, if they happen to be slightly tight, but they weren't on this piano, then all that's to be done first before you try keep weighting, weighing the keys. And then these don't need altering, they're, they're 50 grams plus or minus two, which is excellent. Um, I'm comparing this piano in a minute with the sound of it, with um, the bass uh, strings on this one are, uh, are not, uh, 990, that's the bottom string, A1, and 990 nine millimeters, 99 centimeters roughly. And the Yamaha C1, 114 centimeters, and the Blutner brand that the client's now bought is 140 centimeters. So obviously longer bass string is your more powerful bass. The surprising bass, the well-designed piano, because the bass is surprisingly powerful for the length of the piano. My voice will sound different now because I'm switching microphones. Let's compare the pianos. So this is the Samic. And the Yamaha C1, this is 160 centimetres long, made in 2002. And the Bluth and Stylate, made in 1928. Of course, this is a beautiful rosewood case as well, which is another reason why the client has uh, decided to exchange the piano. That's a Samic 
baby grand piano, 140 centimeters long, four foot seven inches, which is very short indeed, but surprisingly beautiful tone. Why well, I say that is because longer pianos you associate with beautiful tone. Now the Blutner grand piano that the client bought instead obviously has much longer strings and uh, is a Blutner grand, so it's been ex designed to very high specifications. But this is uh, designed extremely well for a baby grand piano. I'm really impressed by it. It's a piano I like playing a lot, so that for me says a lot because if I find myself wanting to play the piano, then obviously compared to the Blutner piano, it's not not the same. But you get a different type of sound on a smaller grand piano, and uh, some beautiful sound. It's very nice for sort of sparkling playing. For romantic playing, a surprisingly warm tone. So really an enjoyable piano and the touch is obviously really important and this has got excellent touch, really surprising. So thank you very much for listening. If you're interested in the piano, please do write to us, info at robertspianos.com. If you would like to try the piano out for a while, you can't come in, then we have a special scheme for that. Please do see our rental page. Thank you very much.